And that's really why I don't feel we can call these brands luxury. That Chanel heart bag has been pushed on social media to within an inch of its life, and it's probably made it even more desirable than it would have been in the first place. Hey everyone, bit of a chatty video. Michael Kors, Coach, Vivian Westwood, Marc Jacobs. Can we really call those brands luxury? Let's discuss because and it's an open forum, okay? And I'm really, uh, I welcome in the comments any of you who agree or disagree. So feel free to go there and say what you like. Any feedback on this discussion is all welcome. And I will say as well that for any of you who are big fans of any of these brands, this is in no way designed to be a cuss on these particular brands it's more of an open discussion and as i say i'd love to get your feedback on it so those brands can we really call them luxury in my opinion no and i've got a few reasons for thinking that but i do also want to add that as i kind of go through my reasoning i do believe the one thing that doesn't seem to matter is quality. Some of these bags are really, really high quality, better than Chanel, better than Dior, but somehow that doesn't help them out. That doesn't make them any more luxurious. So um, anyway, the first thing really is brand. I think this is one thing that really defines the connotation, the feel and the power behind a brand and behind how we feel about a brand. When it comes to cars, car brands, or when it comes to handbag brands or designer brands, you have tiers. Within that one category, you've got tiers with the highest brands, the most prestigious, all the way down to the midweights, all the way down to the brands that are sort of more premium, but they are not considered luxury. And that's really how I see this. Now, if I take a brand like Michael Kors, they are a brand that to me are definitely not luxury. I think the reason for that is price, but also the brand, the quality, and also the fact that that brand is included at outlets, although that doesn't 100% justify this. It's all very complicated because of course you have brands like Gucci, like Prada, even Dior included at some brand outlets. So that alone doesn't mean that a brand is any more or any less luxurious. But for me with Michael Kors, they are a brand that I, I believe in my opinion, replicate and copy a lot of the designs of some of the bigger labels, Louis Vuitton in particular, and I'm going to include in here some examples of where I've seen bags that are dupes in my opinion. I really respect and prefer brands that have got their own ideas and have got their own designs. If everyone's stuff looks the same, it all becomes very boring. But if you take Kate Spade, for example, another brand that I don't see as being low down at all, but it's not luxury. That brand is one, and I love it. They do do dupes, without question, they do. But they also have their own style, their own vibe, and it makes things interesting it makes it a brand that I do go back to and I have a look and I see what they've got every so often because I'm not going to go there and be faced with a load of stuff that looks like a rip-off of other brands. Let's be honest, when we go to a certain brand it's because there's an aesthetic behind that brand that we like. Now if we talk about Coach, Coach and Aspinall of London. Aspinall of London is a weird one because if you own or have bought any of their bags you will know the exceptional quality i mean i'm talking next level exceptional quality they come wrapped beautifully dust bag the the quality the design of the bag they've got their own unique styles they're so classic they're so elegant so timeless and they are not cheap they are sort of around about I would say 400 pounds up to 800 they are not cheap but somehow they also aren't super super luxury 
Why is that? I think it's got something to do with coming back to the brands. If you take brands like Dior, Chanel, Louis Vuitton, Hermes, they have established themselves as brands that those of us who are into this kind of thing will willingly, well, not willingly, but begrudgingly, uh, if you're into it, go and spend the money on. Whereas if there was a coach bag for 4,000, would, would you go and spend 4,000 pounds on a coach bag? No. And that I think is where you've got this vast difference between those categories. Now, also, if we look at coach, coach is a, a one that baffles me a lot because talking about those, those higher brands, Louveton, etc., they're brands that have been around decades absolutely decades but coach has been around for pretty much the same amount of time as chanel has been around both of them were born in the 40s i think chanel was 40s or 50s so why is it that chanel's kind of taken off and has become this brand that can charge eight thousand pounds plus for a bag but coach haven't i don't know the answer to that i do suspect it's to do with price though coach you can go to coach and you can buy a massive amount of bag for your money for let's say three or four hundred pounds and when i say you get lots of your money you get masses for your money with coach the quality is brilliant it's an established brand and even um for example they have a bag talking about coach actually very similar story to michael kors some of coach's bags are very similar to bags from some of the higher end brands. They've got a bag that looks just like the Pochette Matisse. If you buy that, the one I bought anyways, come, comes with three straps. It's got a chain top handle. It's got one, it's got another strap that's long enough to wear crossbody. And then it has a medium drop length that lets you wear it on your shoulder. How many bags for around about the 300 pounds mark can you buy that, okay, it's canvas, but it has got leather trim but the bag's been really thought about. I think Coach is a decent brand. Now, talking about brands, do I have a handbag around here? No, but I have one behind me, wait there. If I show you this, Chanel bag. If we took that logo off the front, I've, do, I've shown you this before and I'd love to get your thoughts on it. If we took the logo off the front and it was just a flap bag, how much would this be worth or how much would you pay for it? It's leather, it's leather, it's caviar, it's one open section on the inside, there's not too much going on with it, it's, it's not particularly um, complicated. No logo on the front, how much would you pay for this bag? Probably, definitely no more than £800, it's quite small as well, but you put the logo on it and the logo suddenly makes this bag something that someone would spend over £3,000 on. And it's the power of that brand that really accelerates those higher end brands from these lower end ones. If something's really expensive, you assume it's really good. If I, I heard this analogy a while ago that was really good and it's, if you've got two face creams, they're both the same product, one's in a fancy pot, one's in a plastic tub, one's 199 and the other one's 50, you're naturally going to assume that the 50 pounds one is going to do something more for your skin when actually the product is exactly the same. And it is that consumer mindset that if it's expensive, it must be good. Why do we wear these bags? For any of you who are into these brands, any of the brands, why do you buy, why do you buy Louis Vuitton? when you could buy an artisan leather bag that doesn't have a logo on it, why do we do it? There is also a, an element of investment in it. If you take like a Marc Jacobs or a Michael Kors bag, they're not gonna be worth any more than what you paid for them, probably a bit less. Whereas you go and buy any of these top end brands and well, not at the moment, <laughs> um, but you can earn back the money, at least the money that you bought them for. Whereas you don't really get that with low, those lower end ones. So price has got a big part to play. Those lower end ones, they don't cost so much, so they don't feel as valuable to us. And then finally, and I think this is um, like a, a newer thing, definitely, but it's whether these brands are pushed on social media. That Chanel heart bag has been pushed on social media to within an inch of its life, and it's probably made it even more desirable than it would have been in the first place. 
I don't see the same thing being done with a lot of these other brands, except for brands like, I think Pollen give away bags as well, I think. Senrev definitely do. But no one raves about Michael Kors, no one raves about Coach. Why is that? I have no clue why that is. In just, I don't know, just thinking about it, in the luxury community, I, I know as I'm saying, I don't class them as luxury, but they are still in that catch-all category of the lower end of what luxury is. And it, when those bags and brands aren't being pushed, I think also it makes them, it makes them less popular than Hermes. You know, everyone's talking about their Hermes story at the moment and how they bought their Hermes bags. So it's really boosting how we all feel about that brand. But really not many people talk about when they bought their Michael Kors bag or when they bought their coach bag. And if it promoted those brands a bit more, maybe those brands would put their prices up. Maybe that would start to make those brands feel a lot more uh, expensive. So that's what I think, but I would love to get your feedback on it. And just to say as well, just to reiterate, this is not me saying that those brands are unattractive or horrible or that I don't like them. It's not that at all. It's just a general conversation. So if you are customers, if you love those brands, don't think that I'm sat here cussing your items because I'm absolutely not. I would love to get your thoughts though, as I say. So leave your comments below and I'll go and chat to you in the comments.